Okay, so what we have to think about here is um, some of the underpinning assumptions in expected utility theory and what we mean when we say rationality. So we're going to talk about rationality, E, U, T, and some assumptions. Okay, so a reminder. Um, we're going to be using um, some notation here, and that notation is this kind of uh, sign that looks a bit like a greater than sign, um, and that is a preference relation. Um, and it's a preference relation, which means um, prefers. So for example, um, if I can talk about different bundles of goods, um, say A and B, and I say that A is preferred to B with that funny symbol, um, I'm just saying you like A more than you like B. And similarly, um, what this will translate to when we talk about utility functions is that this is true um, if it's the case that the utility of A is greater than the utility of B. Or in fact, this implies that. Okay, so the utility of A is greater than the utility of B, and that is only true if and only if um, you prefer A to B. Okay, so A and B are just certain bundles of goods, right? So um, we just need to keep that in mind because we're going to be talking about preferences and whether you like one thing or another. Um, and so when we do that, we have to use the symbol for a preference relation. Um, now, when we do this, um, we're going to talk about two main assumptions that we're going to use. We're going to talk about completeness and transitivity. I also like to use the term consistency when it comes to transitivity. The reason being that if your preferences are transitive, then your behavior is consistent. Okay, so what is completeness? Well, completeness, what that means is that um, your um, preferences can always be used to describe relationships between different goods. So if I think about the bundles A and B that I described previously, so different uh, kinds of goods that you might get. It is either the case that you prefer A to B or you prefer B to A or you are indifferent between A and B. That is a complete description of your understanding of the bundles A and B. So again, either A is preferred to B or B is preferred to A or you're indifferent between A and B. Now, once more, what that's going to do is that's going to co correspond to utilities, as we'll see a little bit later. And what that's going to mean is that the utility for A is greater than the utility for B, or the utility for B is greater than the utility for A, or the utility for A is equal to the utility for B, because you're indifferent between the two. That's what it means when there's completeness. But notice what this is saying, too, is that you can do this for all goods. Right? That's what it means to have complete preferences. Right? It's not just these things A and B that I'm talking about in the abstract, but anything I give you, you can tell me. So if I tell you that um, here's a plate of sushi and here's a hamburger, and you're trying to say, oh, okay, well, I prefer the plate of sushi to the hamburger, or you prefer the hamburger to the plate of sushi, um, or you're indifferent between the two of them. You don't particularly care which one you consume. Um, any, those, those are things that you know you can um, rank and that you can make some decision about. Now then, what is transitivity about? So transitivity, or what I often call consistency, that means the following. Um, again, if you consider different goods, okay, or different bundles of goods, um, so these are going to comprise different, say, X's and Y's that you could potentially consume or use. Well, um, if you think about these bundles, um, if you have one bundle X, and you prefer X to Y, and you prefer Y to another bundle, Z or Z, then it must be the case that you cannot, you cannot prefer Z to X. And sometimes that's stated in the positive in that you say X must be preferred to Z or Z. So see what, what happens here, right? You prefer X to Y, you prefer Y to Z, and therefore you must prefer X to Z, given the fact that you prefer X to Y. Um, that's what we mean by consistency. 
Um, so that is the way of stating it positively, right? The other way that I said stating it negatively is you prefer x to y and you prefer y to z. Therefore, it must be the case that x, um, um, sorry, that z cannot be preferred to x. So z cannot be preferred to x if you prefer y to z and x to y. Um, so in both cases, we have consistency there. Okay, now, um, what this then allows us to do is we can then, if we have complete and transitive preferences, this allows us to represent our preferences with a utility function. And that utility function we'll often refer to as u dot, because there'll be some arguments in that utility function that fill in for the place of the dot. Um, and so the utility function can represent these if they fit these assumptions. And we say that someone who has preferences that fit those um, uh, assumptions, that they are, quote, rational. OK. Um, now, um, we have to think about this a little bit further um, in terms of what we can do in terms of thinking about where this goes. So. Um, if we have these preference relations um, and we're trying to think about this, well, this we think firstly, all right, it's the case that I am rational when I have these preferences, then I have preferences that are what we call monotone. Um, what that means typically is more is better. Okay, so that's saying that um, I need more money, more. Um, uh, cell phones, more pizza, more um, candy, whatever. These kinds of things are, I like more. That's what it means when something is um, um, monotone. Like more is better or more is preferred to less. And then we'll often say that the preference relation is convex. Okay, and what does that mean? We've got a diminishing marginal rate of substitution which you might remember from intermediate microeconomics. Okay, now, um, what we get with that is a um, utility function um, where, where if we're talking about someone who um, has a specific set of preferences like this, we're going to have a concave and monotonic, monotonic more is better, utility function. Okay, so um, what does something like that look like? Oh, well, um, we can think about that in a variety of different ways, but um, one kind of utility function where we'd say that um, more is better and we've got, um, say, diminishing marginal utility, um, imagine I could represent this in the following way. So some thing that I like here is y, and y could be thought of as wealth. And then here I've got the utility of y. And then what I can do from, from that point is I can just map my understanding of the utility of y and say, oh, look, it's going up at an increasing rate, at a decreasing rate. So I've got u, y, that u dot. And that's satisfying the idea that more is better, and um, I've got a decreasing marginal utility of wealth. Um, and there's a concave function. So that's one way that we can think about this, and we're going to come back to this function a little bit later. I gave you an example of a function that looks something like this when I said, oh, let's say that u equals the natural log of y plus 1. That satisfied um, the axioms that we were speaking about earlier. Oh, all right, we're going to stop there for now, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about some other points about prospects and um, expected utility that we need to understand as we go forward.